Hello, I'm Alberto Piquet. I'm the head of the Materials and Systems Branch at the Naval Research Laboratory. Uh, we're part of the Materials Science and Technology Division, and we do work on a wide range of areas involving the synthesis, um, processing, characterization, and implementation of a wide range of materials with uh, properties ranging from electronic properties, optical properties, all the way to power generation. Uh, what I'd like to talk to you today about is the work that we do in the group uh, involved on laser printing of electronics. Uh, what we're focusing on is on the uh, laser direct write of hybrid electronics. Now, we call it laser direct write because these are non-lithographic processes. That means that we do not need to use any masking or any post-processing to create a pattern. Uh, we use the laser to be able to transfer functional materials on the shape of a pre-generated uh, uh, pattern and there's no uh, removal of material or excess material afterwards. Uh, this is very useful uh, uh, nowadays because of the interest in additive manufacturing techniques uh, that lets us now uh, not just build a part but also add functionality in the terms of electronics that we can place uh, in these parts. And the laser printing techniques uh, have an advantage uh, with traditional other printing techniques like inkjet because with the laser direct write technique we can both remove material and print material. And we can also work with a very wide range of materials, which we'll show you some examples uh, next, and also uh, be able to work on a wide range of surfaces. So we're not limited uh, by things like wetting behavior, we're not limited by viscosity of the inks that we want to print, and we're not limited by the nature of the material that we're trying to print. It can be fine, uh, very small size nanoparticles, for example, or it could be things like a very coarse uh, ceramic uh, materials. Um, so we have, um, through the years, uh, developed these laser direct write techniques to uh, prototype different types of devices, uh, ranging from simple uh, interconnects, uh, just to do uh, uh, electrical connection, to RF transmission lines, to antennas, uh, all the way to making sensors and making batteries. And what drives that is both uh, materials the materials that can be used that are compatible with the, with the processes and also the types of, uh, of devices that want to be made. I mean, we're not uh, yet uh, uh, capable of printing, for example, a, a computer or a, or a cell phone, uh, but we can print now modules that we'll have, for example, could be used uh, as antennas or it could be used as uh, um, uh, sensors, uh, which could then be embedded on structures that already exist and so that makes it then uh, a way to not just make new devices but also retrofit existing structures and make them smart, if you will. What we do is uh, laser direct write of liquids from low to very high viscosities. So it could range from water, for example, up to toothpaste type viscosities. At the low end, at the uh, low viscosity end, we can print silver nano inks and here are some examples of structures we've made. This is an NRL logo that um, we've used fast scanning mirrors to print the, the pattern on glass. Another example here is a FPGA fan out array on Kapton, also made with silver nano ink. And here's an example of a D-ring resonator, which is useful as a metamaterial surface. So going to the other end of the viscosity range, the high viscosity, um, we've printed structures that are congruent in shape and size to the laser beam. The high viscosity lets us do that because it uh, resists deformation um, of, the, of, the, of the material as it uh, flies to the receiving substrate. And that's important, um, especially in 3D manufacturing, additive manufacturing, because now when you transfer a feature, it matches exactly to what you design. So in a sense, your voxel, your, your printed volume element, matches the pixel in your drawing. And one of the things that we think is a potentially disruptive technology is that by using this congruent laser transfer, we can combine it with a spatial light modulator, which is essentially uh, an array of micromirrors that lets you uh, structure the light beam, the spatial profile of the light pulse. And what that does is that it, it acts as a dynamic mass. You can make features such as this, uh, complex features such as these that are shown earlier. And it can be done dynamically. And you can print the laser 
uh, pattern all in one shot. So that is essentially that's parallel processing with what has been a serial process. So this is a, we think a, a, a very important advance in the field of laser direct writing. We can also print functional devices. These are uh, lithium batteries that have been printed uh, via laser uh, direct write. And by taking these devices that have been printed by laser direct write, we can combine them with uh, laser micro machining and make embedded devices where we take an existing object, in this case a circuit board, we can machine a, a laser micro machine a pocket in it and then place a, a micro lithium battery that's been made by a laser direct write. So but borrowing on this, this idea of, you know, some things are not conducive to, make, uh, to being manufactured by laser, laser direct write, so, uh, such as semiconductor devices. Why reinvent the wheel? So we've developed a process referred to as lays in place. So instead of printing uh, ink or a fluid or a material, we are printing full devices. So we take commercial uh, bare dye and we transfer them the same process as we would with a, a typical ribbon. So this is uh, an example of this. These are uh, LEDs that are roughly 300 microns by 300 microns that have been laser printed onto the underlying Kapton substrate. And if we take this uh, even further, we can look what we can do with uh, laser direct structuring and additive manufacturing. This, this sample right here was, was printed, printed using FDM, after which we laser uh, patterned it and forming the electrical interconnects and then we're able to use laser transfer processes to print the devices. The last thing that we've been working on is combining all of this to work on 3D objects. So instead of working only in 2D now, we're, we're working towards working on uh, placing electronics and interconnects on three-dimensional devices. With this, we hope that you have an idea of what Laser Direct Write is capable of doing. Um, we have shown you a, a few examples of the structures and devices that we have made uh, through the years uh, using these laser-based printing techniques. And what is exciting about uh, the future of this process is how we can integrate it with additive manufacturing techniques to generate or fabricate uh, actual parts uh, that then can contain electronics. Um, so we're moving away from the traditional 2D circuit board to more of a print uh, where you want uh, the devices that you need uh, in order to make a functional structure. And these uh, processes, uh, in addition to applications in the defense-related uh, um, areas, uh, also have many commercial applications and we've been active through the years uh, with NRL's technology transfer office uh, where we have actually been in, uh, working with uh, industry um, companies where we can actually transfer some of this technology and uh, we're looking forward to, to continue doing this in the, in the future.